have a dream or a song to sing to help me come with anything if you see the wonder of a fairy tale you can take the future even if you fail I believe in angels something good in everything I see I believe in angels when I know the time is right for me across the street In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the grace and peace of God our Father, and the risen Lord be with you all. I welcome you all here this, uh, this afternoon as we uh, celebrate the life of, of Megan Ann Reed. give thanks to God for her and for all that she has meant so much to each and every one of you. And in particular, let's remember... Megan's family, Trina, Brian and Erin here. It's wonderful that so many of you are here to support them in their moment of loss. It's a journey that we, we take together, friends. Um, it's a very difficult one, obviously. And so we're here to remember this fine young woman, to commend her to the Lord 
and to really remember how what we do, we do together. Let's begin by remembering as people of faith, because we gather as people who have trust and belief in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so it's in that spirit that we commend Megan now to God's, to God's care and to God's life. We begin by lighting the Easter candle, the baptismal candle, the candle that was lit uh, for Megan on the day of her baptism. And I invite Erin uh, now to come up and light the candle for her sister. Thank you, Erin. Throughout her life, Megan kept the flame of faith burning brightly in her heart. Together, may she now share with him eternal glory. We now sprinkle Megan with the the water of baptism, a reminder of how she too now shares in the life of Christ through baptism. Water is the source of all life and a symbol of the new life received by Megan at her baptism. May she now enjoy the fullness of this life. Please be seated now as we hear some words of remembrance. Thank you. family would like to thank you for being here today to celebrate the life of Megan. Some family couldn't be here due to the distance and other circumstances, so we'd like to thank them for joining us on the live screen. As most of you know, my name is Trina and I'm Megan's mum. Megan was born on the 6th of September 2003, in the middle of the night. Brian and I were instantly in love with our baby girl. Um, Brian's parents came to visit and meet their granddaughter in the November of that year. Um, And in February 2004, my mother had breast cancer for for the second time. At that time, um, Megan, still a baby, was her little ray of sunshine during her recovery from surgery and through her chemotherapy. I cannot remember Megan's first words, but I suspect they may have been data. Isn't it always? Um, (laughs) Megan started walking a few weeks just before she turned one. Megan was breastfed as a baby and um, Megan and I attended uh, the Australian Breastfeeding Association meetings from before she was born. Megan and I made friends with Tanya and her daughter Keely through these meetings and we'd also meet outside of the meetings and go to the park shopping centres or get a coffee. And Megan's other first friend was our neighbour, Samantha. Throughout their younger years, Samantha would be at our house or vice versa, Erin would be... Oh, Erin. Megan would be over there. So, and many sleepovers happened. Megan wanted a sibling for many years. In 2010, her little sister Erin was born. Megan was there for the birth of when Erin entered the world. Megan loved her little sister even when she was annoying. 
Megan started prep in 2009 at St Anthony's and enjoyed school. Many of Megan's friendships started here either through her class or at after school care. Megan was an active girl and over the years she participated in choir, cheerleading and tennis and touch through and around school. In 2016, Megan started Year 7 at Mount Lavernia. Megan kept a lot of the same friends from primary school, but new friends were made. Um, over the, she took many subjects over those years, but in Year 11 and 12, her favourite subjects were food and nutrition, Japanese and fitness. And I think the teachers helped make them her favourite as well. In 2018, Megan went to Japan with the school. Megan had the greatest time. Highlights were going to Disneyland and Universal Studios. Megan had been hanging out to go to Harry Potter World in, at, at Universal Studios. She came home with her Hufflepuff robes, as well as many other Harry Potter items. Megan had a great love of Harry Potter, um, which she'd sort of been from years ago, and um, she'd read all the books many, many times, as well as watched the movies a lot of times. Even when we were in hospital, we would be watching them again. So um, Brian's family um, live in Canada and the, the United States. So um, we've taken Megan overseas at least four times. Um, I remember when Megan met her Uncle Mark for the first time when she was two years old. It was like Megan recognised Mark as family and she went straight into his arms for a hug and was happy for Mark to keep holding her. Before that, you know, how little kids are, they sort of can be standoffish, so I was amazed. We always visited um, during the winter in December and January. Megan and Erin would have fun and go tobogganing and make snowmen and snow angels. They would, in later years, when Megan was older, shopping would be involved. Um, and it was also time to see her cousins and their partners, Kerry Lynn, Jeff, Courtney, Kyle, Chantel, Brandon, Colette and Casey. And we would celebrate Christmas and New Year with our family. The year we visited when Megan was seven, Erin was just a baby. Megan was in her playing school phase. She loved being the teacher and she would put on this really bossy school voice and I remember her trying to teach Jeff and maybe Kerry Lynn, and you could hear her voice all through the house. Megan's love of cheerleading started when she was in year two. At that time, St Anthony's had a cheer team and Megan was in, just wanted to be what the big girls were. Training was held in San Damiano after school and the following year, she started competing with the school team. Megan stayed with the school teams for about three years then she joined Queensland Cheer Elite, or what we call QCE. She started in a level one team called Garnets. Eventually got to Junior Jets, a level two team, and then she was in multiple other teams. She also enjoyed participating in the promo squad and at, for the school fates at, at the ECA. Um, at the end of 2020, um, QCE was sold to Outlaws and Megan was accepted into their cadet program, which was learning to be a coach. Megan had always been wanted to be a cheer coach from, oh, for many years. And um, she was too unwell that first year to attend too much after first term, but then was accepted again this year. And so she was in... Youth Sunshine was her um, team that she was assistant coaching for and she gained her level one coaching um, a couple of months ago. Um, and she tried her best in amongst our hospital visits to attend the trainings she could. Megan has also gained so many more special friends from cheerleading, girls that love cheer as much as she did. And I know there's a lot here today. Um, in November 2019, Megan was diagnosed with Hodgkin lymphoma. She underwent five circles of treatment as an outpatient and completed this in April 2020. At this stage, Megan was in remission and in July, she rang the bell. In the October, we noticed that a few of Megan's original symptoms had returned and at her checkup, we, had, we found out that she had relapsed. 
We started fertility preservation and we had to confirm the original diagnosis which came back as Hodgkin lymphoma. Treatment this time was chemotherapy to get um, Megan into remission and then stem cell transplant. Megan did five cycles of chemotherapy to get to transplant and Erin was Megan's stem cell donor. She was admitted um, on the 9th of April and she received the cells on the 16th of April and she did receive a top up in June. Megan and I were in hospital for 12 weeks with most of that time in isolation and we were discharged at the end of June. She was very happy to be home. Um, we found out that the stem cell transplant and the chemo from that did not get rid of the lymphoma. So they were hoping that the, if there's a graft burst lymphoma effect would attack the lymphoma. Between June and September, we were in and out of hospital with numerous complications and graft versus host disease. At the end of September, she um, started radiation therapy as we decided we needed to give that a go. Towards the end of the radiation, she came down with another complication, which ended in being admitted to hospital. During this time, there were additional complications, which included a lung problem and a trip to paediatric ICU. This admission ended up being 11 weeks, and the re recovery from this was her hardest, as she ne needed oxygen for like a month or two afterwards, and um, trying to gain muscle tone and be able to walk any distance. We managed to spend a couple days at Noosa, and we were finally discharged just before Christmas. Her PET scan in the October showed that the radiation had actually worked, and she, at that time she had no cancer. It was so hard missing out on school, spending time with her friends, attending parties, schoolies and other occasions. I hope Megan's friends realise how much she wanted to be with them, do what they were doing, even the exams. Megan was able to attend her graduation and the last couple of days at school, but in a wheelchair and on oxygen. And Mount Alvernia were so helpful and did everything to make, us, make it as easy as possible. Over December and January while home, we were attending the hospital weekly for bloods and physiotherapy. It was a time of healing and trying to get back to some type of normal and get some strength. It was also a time for isolation, as Megan's lungs were vulnerable and COVID, getting COVID was a really bad idea. In February, Megan had another PET scan and we found the lymphoma was back. There were a couple of operations to a confirmed diagnosis and there were more complications to do this. Um, the diagnosis actually came back as grey zone lymphoma, which has lots of similarities to the Hodgkin lymphoma. So it may have been this grey zone lymphoma all along. She also had um, a, a funny infection in her foot which was a very slow-growing um, mycobacterium, and she ended up on really strong antibiotics, and then her, anti her nausea was really ba bad, ba badly and had to be on lots of anti-nausea medicine. Megan commenced a new treatment called checkpoint inhibitors in March. Initially, there was a good response, but then it was difficult to tell. At the end of May, Megan got her starlight wish. She got her French bulldog puppy. She was very happy to become a puppy mum to her sweet girl named Sparkle McMuffin. Megan had been wish wanting this puppy for so long and because we were in and out of hospital, I wouldn't say yes. So it, the timing worked out absolutely perfectly. Megan was at home with Sparkle for around six weeks, seven weeks, which we couldn't have planned it better. In hindsight, I feel Megan started declining a couple of weeks after getting Sparkle. In the last week, things 
it was difficult to see how fast she was declining as there were other factors at work. We are grateful that family and friends were able to spend her last days with her and us. We felt very supported by Dr Chris, Dr Dave, Dr Kim, other doctors, Jill, and lots of our oncology nurses, nurses as well as our other hospital friends. When we were admitted, we would see them very often, so we were very, uncomfortable, very comfortable. Um, we would like to say our thanks for making a bad couple of days better by being there for us. It provided so much comfort to me. Megan showed such strength and faced so many difficult things no 18-year-old should have to go through. Megan continued to support charities that support children with cancer or blood cancer. She sold stickers and would donate her profits to charity each month. She also loved her bravery buddies. Her first one was Hope, and Hope is with her. Then she purchased, oh, she had a couple of others. Um, Megan also raised funds in 2020 and 2021 for Light the Night for the Leukaemia Foundation. In recent years, we've lost some very special people to us, which affected Megan as well. Her godmother died from cancer, my best friend Lisa. Our niece and Megan's cousin Courtney also passed away from cancer. And Brian's brother Mark was taken by COVID. These have affected our family greatly and still do, and Megan felt these acutely. Megan has been sharing her story on social media. Her main platforms are TikTok, Instagram and YouTube. Megan started sharing her life on these platforms when she struggled to find others to connect with. Megan's TikTok now has a following of 185,000 and it was through it that she would do posts about everything. So packing her bag to go to hospital, a treatment, am I cancer free, there's so many things. Sometimes the horrible stuff and good stuff, like I remember do her doing these fun ones for her 18th birthday and having to stay up till midnight to do it, to get the clock ticking over. Megan started creating videos for YouTube documenting her life. And since Megan's passing, I've been overwhelmed by messages across all the platforms of how much Megan has helped and how much they will miss her. Brian and I are so proud of Megan and what she achieved despite the barriers in her way. So many people have commented that Pete Megan remained positive in the face of her illness, as well as how much she has helped them. Megan was beautiful inside and out and was still trying to help others. We loved her so very much. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the life of Megan. Make you happy 
Let us, let us pray. God of all consolation, into your hands we humbly entrust our sister Megan. In this life you embraced her with your tender love. Deliver her now from every evil and bid her enter your eternal rest. The old order has passed away. Welcome her then into paradise, where there will be no sorrow, no weeping or pain, but the fullness of peace and joy with your Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. We now have our first reading. Thank you. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looks like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation. But they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope is rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and prove them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in them will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from old. In love remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Relieve the anguish of my heart and set me free from my distress. Preserve my life and rescue me. Do not disappoint me. You are my refugee. Let us please stand to welcome the gospel. The hallelujah response is in your booklet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the will of the Father, says the Lord. All who believe in the Son will have eternal life. And I will raise them to life again on the last day. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at the right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, 
Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are my members of my family, you did it to me. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Trina for, and Brian, for sharing those words with us earlier in memory of your dear daughter. Um, it was, uh, uh, they were very moving and, and I'm sure difficult to write and thank you for sharing, with, with, sharing them with me last night. Thank you. Today's service for Megan, as I said, is, is very difficult and might I say quite confronting really for her family especially, huh? who have loved and, and cherished her daughter, their daughter beyond words and who always will. It's confronting, I think, too, for many of Megan's friends here from Mount Alvernia, St Anthony's, and from far and wide, in person or through social media, who see in Megan someone just like themselves, someone young, someone full of life, someone should have a future ahead of themselves. For, our, for Megan's teachers here, who walked with her and supported her, for her medical team, who also supported her and her family so much, it's always hard to farewell our loved ones, but especially someone so young as Megan. And so quite likely, dear friends, um, just like that author of the Book of Wisdom that we heard just now, and like so many people throughout history, we are understandably left asking questions and trying to make some sense of Megan's experience of illness and her eventual death. Today we share a path with many, many other people. It's a very human path. And it's a path we certainly do not make alone, a walk alone. And maybe that is the first thing we need to acknowledge this afternoon, that as profoundly, as profoundly personal and individual grief is, it is also not something we suffer totally alone, and nor should it be. And as limited and as awkward we can all feel in the presence of another person's grief, nevertheless, we are always connected and we do hold each other up. Not because we have some ability to somehow take away uh, the pain of another person, but we support one another, first of all, purely and simply by our presence and somehow within our own hearts sharing the other's pain. Obviously my knowledge of Megan is very limited, unlike many of yours, many of you. But listening to and sharing with the family last week, and I feel I can stand here and say that Megan was an extraordinary, ordinary young woman. In many ways, she was so ordinary. Hmm? Ordinary that she liked many of the things that any young girl, then any teenage girl, and then any young adult would like. Hmm? And naturally so. She was a child of the 21st century, of the age of social media, of having friendship groups made up of all sorts of people near and far. She was a child of Harry Potter, of cheerleading and 
everything else that, that she liked and was symbolised there a little bit on the table in front of us. But that ordinariness of Megan also came to reveal her extraordinariness, especially once her lymphoma became such a force in her life, a force that no one would want for themselves or wish upon anyone else, let alone a young person like Megan. Although we naturally ask and we try to find answers for illness in all of our lives, who wouldn't? There still nevertheless remains so much out of our control. At the end of the day, friends, we know. We are human, we are flesh and blood, we are limited, we are susceptible to all sorts of things of nature. But for many... The unwanted and the undeserved that they experience also becomes the source of the extraordinary. It did for Megan. For Megan and for her family who walked with her, her, power, her painful journey, the journey of treatments which came with so many twists and turns, and I know, I know, Trina and Brian, you can recite probably every single day and week of what she went through. That illness was also to reveal this young woman's courage and her tremendous generosity of spirit. When I met with Trina and Brian and Erin last week, and this is really what struck me most in their story that they shared with me just how Megan was able to, to literally use her illness as a force for good and for reaching out to support others in similar circumstances. Now, some people might say that she was just a naturally positive person, though, understandably, I'm sure she had lots and lots of days when she didn't feel particularly positive, naturally. But positive or not is not really the point. Because Megan seems to have managed, through it all, to largely remember others. To not just collapse into herself. And friends, this is one of the key messages of the Gospel we've just heard from St. Matthew. Such a familiar story to each of us. It's a parable it's a parable that invites us, first of all, to never forget those among us who are the most vulnerable, the hungry, the naked, the stranger, the sick, the lonely, the isolated. Megan did just that. She used her own illness and her own times very weakened state to reach out to others in their weakened and vulnerable states. As the parable suggests, we may not or never realise we are reaching out to Jesus himself when we care for the least of our brothers and sisters, but we are assured that we are. And I doubt too that Megan was thinking of Jesus when she was doing this, but she was reaching out to the Lord in her brothers and sisters. Megan loved being a cheerleader, as we heard, and she wanted to be a coach, and she made it to assistant coach. Is that right, Trina? Yes. Well, whether she was cheerleading on the sidelines of a sporting event or not, she most certainly succeeded but she succeeded in more ways than one because she became a cheerleader and a coach to so many sharing her experience, to so many ill people or people who just needed encourage and inspiration because of their life circumstances. She did this by her own example, by her own attitude, and by her own means. 
in person and via social media, TikTok and YouTube and everything else. And in this way, Megan became an example of the virtuous, those people who are called virtuous, as we heard in our first reading. People who are literally gold. They are gold. They are gold for our community. They are gold for our world. They are people who shine out for others and for whom God's grace and mercy surely await. Brothers and sisters, I'm very, very conscious that I know that whatever I say or anyone else will say, the pain and the grief that this family feels and the questions that I'm sure we all have today won't be taken away. Nice words don't take those sorts of things away. But if I can say anything that our whole Christian tradition and message tells us, it is simply this, that whatever suffering or doubts or questions we may have now and into the future, we are never, never alone in them. We always have others who are willing to share with us. And we are most assured that we always have a God in Jesus Christ who shares in our experience to the full. We heard this in those words of Jesus today when he made himself, he made himself to be the very same as those least brothers and sisters of ours. Our faith tells us that Jesus was one with Megan in her suffering. And that same faith now tells us that she is now one with him in his life. I invite you now to stand as we pray our prayers of intercession. I invite the readers to come forward, please. Thank you. Eternal God, in the midst of our pain and grief, we thank you for the good that you granted us to see and experience in and through Megan. Lord our God, you hear the prayers of all who sorrow and are in pain. So be with us now as we turn to you in our need. Lord, for Megan's family, we'll thank you for her presence in our lives and ask for your strength to continue our journey in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask your blessing on all Megan's relatives and friends here present and those prevented from coming. Thank you for these friendships which she dearly treasured and which enriched her life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our other deceased relatives and friends who have been an inspiration to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I invite you to pause in the silence of your own hearts, offer your own prayer and wish, desire uh, for Megan and for her family. God, your days are without end and your mercies beyond counting. May your Holy Spirit lead us to live in holiness and justice all our days. Then after serving you in the fellowship of the church with strong faith, consoling hope and perfect love for all, may we joyfully come to your kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Now, friends, together as brothers and sisters, we pray in those words where we wait for the coming of God's kingdom and our sharing in that kingdom in fullness. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. If you wish, you may, you may take a seat as we have our concluding prayers. We will have one set of prayers at this moment, and then after we, we, we go outside, but before the... Uh, the hearse leaves, we'll have another few short prayers uh, as a final farewell and blessing to Megan. Dear friends, before we go our separate ways, we now take leave of Megan. May our farewell express our affection for her, now thanksgiving that she has been such a part of our lives. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. invite you now to respond to the song of farewell there in your books and let's uh, dear friends let's really let's really beef it out saints of god come to her aid come to meet her angels of the lord receive her soul and present her to god the most high megan may christ who called you take you to himself may angels lead you to abraham's side Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Give me an eternal rest, O Lord, and may your light shine upon her forever. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend to you our sister Megan in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed on Megan in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and now with you and with our sister forever. Megan, may the angels lead you into paradise and may the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. The Lord be with you all. And may Almighty God bless us and keep us in his care, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So in peace now, let us accompany Megan to her place of rest.
sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Megan and we commit her body to the elements. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious upon her. The Lord look upon, lift up his countenance upon her and give her his peace. Almighty God, through the death of your Son on the cross, you destroyed our death, and through his rest in the tomb you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you, and through his rising again you restored us to eternal life. God of the living and the dead, accept our prayers for those who have died in Christ and are buried with him in the hope of rising again. Since they were true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joy of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her, and may she rest in peace. And may her soul and the souls of all our faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. May the love of God and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ bless and console and be with us always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you.